here with the Tamron 18 to 200 milliliter lens again. In this case, I'm using the Photo DX adapter. Like is probably pretty obvious, some of the other videos, it wasn't working well with the M50 and the M5. But in this case, I'm gonna try this adapter instead of the official Canon one to see if there's any difference. I don't know if it's temperature, I don't know if it's the adapter, I don't know if it's just a bad compatibility thing, but yeah. Let's see how it works. Full program mode, basic. I have the screen disabled. Pretty much as simple as possible. That way, as simple as possible with gloves on, not having the touch screen is actually a benefit because it gets in the way you accidentally touch it. My gloves do have the touch capability to it, but they're not sensitive enough to use it effectively. In the summer, this is an actual stream which is pretty nice. But in the winter, obviously, not so much. There is a Tamron lens that is EFM. That would be the one you would want to get if you specifically want something from Tamron. Or you can get the Canon 18 to 150 milliliter. So it's a little shorter, but it's official. It should be pretty consistent. I really do like the added range, something like this gives you, but there are always drawbacks, as I say, every video with this lens. I do not have my glasses on, so I disabled the viewfinder. A little more difficult to use with a lens like this, but it's good enough on the screen. I can still change where the focus point is. It's this bottom button. You have to cycle it and then move it with the D-pad. Using that side button for changing the focus point with the D-pad is not as convenient as the touch and drag out of focus when it's up to your face, but it does work. The stabilizer in this lens is very effective compared to other ones I've used for the EFM cameras. I do think it's a good idea to go out in situations where the photos, they aren't the main focus. It, the main focus is understanding your equipment and getting a good feel for what it can and can't do. In cases like this where I don't care exactly where it's focused, I can use the focus and recompose method. It's just a little quicker and it's not as accurate, but it works well enough so I don't have to mess around with buttons. So I'll just focus on that and then shift the camera a little bit. Usually you're supposed to try to keep the same plane, but I don't even care that much. So far this combination is working 20 so photos in. I think it took a while for the other one to mess up. Part of the reason I make these videos is to explore different equipment, try to see how it works, how well it works. So definitely with something like this, it's more for the channel than anything else. It's not something I really want to use outside of that. But at least once I figure out how it all works, I can definitely use it in situations where I know it's going to work well. The nice thing about a zoom lens is that you can really get in where you want and you don't have to be in a specific location. In this case, if I want the reflection in the water, I can just easily zoom in. It's difficult making interesting landscape photos when the trees are bare, but they also are still visible in the photo. So it's like a big mess of brown lines. I'm not really sure what to do with that. But I have the long zoom so I can pick spots that aren't super cluttered. So you've got some open area, but also the background. Usable at least.
Oh, just had an issue. Error zero one. Communication between the camera and the lens is faulty. Clean the lens contacts. Ah, uh, just had an again. The benefit of a long zoom lens is that I can get close and it has decent mag... Say another area. <laughs> it has decent magnification at that zoom. So you can get a lot of detail. Water like this with the leaves in it and a lot of texture and detail is a good subject. Then they have a lot of the same color, but there's just a lot of different lines and shapes. I think I'm going to end it here. The takeaway is that this lens is not perfect, especially with the EFM cameras. There's some quirks. I think it might be temperature related. It could be adapter related where it just gets a little off. And it works, or I should say it does not work sometimes with either adapter that I have. It just starts having issues. It's hard to say what exactly the problem is, but I will keep continuing to use this lens. There's no reason not to. And I'm just going to be mindful that it won't always work for me, especially with these cameras. But I'm going to take this thing back all the way. I don't have anything else with me, like bags. So whoever did this, you can be mad at for cutting the video short. Anyways, I'm Scott Kirby Bonds. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, and the applause feature. All that helps out a lot. Thanks.